Okay, so we are doing uh, a problem based on um, audit expectations and analytical. Uh, we are doing this from the 18th edition of the Principles of Auditing and Other Assurance Services, uh, published by Ray Whittington, Kurt Painey. And we are on problem 5-55 on page 178. Uh, Marilyn Terrell is the senior auditor for the audit of the company for the year ended December 31st, 2014. In planning the audit, Maryland has attempted to develop uh, expectations for planning analytical procedures based on the financial information for prior years and her knowledge of the business and industry, including uh, based on the economic conditions, she believes that the increase in sales for the current year should approximate the historical trend. Based on her knowledge of industrial trends, she believes that gross profit for 2014 should be about 2% less than the percentage for 2013. Based on her knowledge of regulations, she is aware the effective tax rate for the company for 2014 has been reduced by 5% from that in 2013. And based on reviewed general ledger, terminal average appreciable assets has increased by 10%. Based on her knowledge of economic conditions, she's aware the effective interest rate on the company's line of credit for 2014 was approximately 12%. The average outstanding balance of line of credit is $2,300,000. Uh, this line of credit's company's only interest-bearing debt. Based on her discussion with management and her knowledge of the industry, she believes that the amount of other expenses should be consistent with trends in the prior year. So what we have here, then, is our prior year numbers. So what we are going to do, and what's required in the problem is A, describe the purpose of analytical procedures in the risk assessment stage of the audit. And basically we're going to perform those at the risk assessment stage. Uh, we want to help identify something that's going to be unusual. So in transactions, events, amounts that are might affect the fairness of the financial statements. So there um, we want it also helps us understand the uh, the business a little bit more and so really we're looking a lot for outliers when we compare things to what the, the actual numbers are we're gonna say okay what's different what should it be why isn't why is there a difference so next B develop the expected amounts for 2014 for each of the above income state I income statement items now this is where we're gonna use a little bit of judgment here and what I'm going to do is based pretty much on trends, and we may I may point out a couple of, couple of options that we can use, um, but given the consideration of the nature of the accounts, we're, I'm going to be using trends. Okay, so let's start with sales. Uh, sales are expected to increase at our historical trend. Well, if you notice here, we've gone up $700 per year. So we're going to go ahead and say, based on that information, our sales should go up another $700 a year or $10,800. Uh, cost of goods sold, we're going to do off here on the side a little calculation of what our annual percentage um, of cost of goods sold is. So we're going to start with, we're going to just do a we kind of do this in a real quick way here. We're going to do an equal sum of our number there and divide that by our sales. So this is going to give us our average cost of goods sold percentage. So then we're just going to take our sales times cost of goods sold. And it's going to give us 74068. And then to get our gross profit, take our course sales minus cost of goods sold. So based on our projections, we should have a gross profit of $3,332. Okay, next we're going to look at sales commissions. And I always look at sales commissions as a percentage uh, of, of sales. So we are going to do a quick, again, little... Uh, formula here so we're going to figure out what what's our average percent of sales here that we are paying so we're going to go through here and just do a quickie little whoops little formula so we're at seven percent so if we take ten thousand eight hundred times point 
007, so our sales commissions of $756 would be what we would expect. Uh, advertising, again, that looks like it's not going uh, also on a con, uh, percentage basis. It's not really steady. So we're going to do the same type of thing here. We're going to go ahead and calculate what percentage we have of sales for advertising. Again, there's different methods that we can use here, but we're just going to use some trends. And so we're showing 2%. I'm going to drag that over here. And so our commissions, I mean, our, excuse me, our advertising should be times 0 0.02. So we should be at about $216 for my commissions. Okay, next uh, we have salaries. And it appears salaries are going up $21 a year. So we are going to go ahead and continue that steady trend. As we noted in the instructions there that based on our discussions with management and the industry, we expect that uh, our other expenses should be consistent within what we're doing for the year. Uh, payroll taxes, we are going up around seven to eight dollars per year so let's just go ahead and do eight dollars and benefits going up seven dollars per year so we'll take 181 plus our seven dollars per year uh, rents going up a dollar a year it appears so We'll increase it by a dollar in appreciation. Uh, it says our base went up 10%. It looks like that should be reasonable because remember, depending on how we depreciate, but it's been pretty steady at a $3 increase per year uh, based on materiality. I think we're going to go ahead and say that we will also increase this year by 3%. Uh, supplies are going up $2 per year on a trend, so we are going to go ahead and do an increase of $2. And it appears to me we're going up on utilities a buck a year, so we will add a dollar for there. And three dollars per year on legal and accounting. It's always good to pay accountants a little bit more, hopefully not the attorneys. Haha. Uh, okay, so miscellaneous. Increasing about a buck a year, that's fine. And then finally, interest expense. Now, interest expense... We can look at a trend or we can look at, since we're given the fact that our average outstanding balance of our credit line is $2 million three, and we know our uh, interest rate was approximately 12 Okay, next we're talking about interest expense, and we have in there, based on uh, her knowledge of economic conditions, she's aware that the effective interest rate on the company's line of credit was approximately 12 percent so the outstanding balance of the credit of the line of credit is two million or the average outstanding balance is two million three hundred thousand uh, the line of credit of the company is the only interest bearing account so if we just do a two million three hundred thousand times our annual rate average annual rate 12 percent effective rate we are at we're doing this in thousands so we're gonna be at 276 now you look at that and that's a pretty hefty jump we went from 12 so if you're not comfortable with that and there's reason to believe that it should be less you could go with the trend of okay well we went up twelve dollars we can go up another twelve dollars the year before so again that's that's a judgment case here um i'm gonna go ahead then our effective tax, tax rate based on trend is 22%. So we will take that times 0.22. So, and if you want to get down to the details, it was um, in 2013, it was 21.7, 22% in 2012, 22.5 in 2013. So we're going to go ahead and just use a quick rate of 22. It doesn't have to be exact. Eh? And that's the other thing. We're using estimates. So, so that's, we're using what is expected. Okay. 
So, and that is what we come out with based on that, $249 of net income. Um, so if we look at the question in C, they're on an, uh, the audited, uh, unaudited financial statement for the current year show 31% gross profit rate. Uh, assuming that this represents a misstatement from the amount you developed as an expectation, calculate the estimated effective misstatement on the net income before taxes by 2004. So, well, if we look at um, our expected rate, so we're showing, right now we're showing a 31% percent gross profit rate okay so our gross profit rate of uh, 31 percent is what they have on audited um, so if we take that 31 percent growth gross profit rate we had sales of 10,800 and we take that times 0.31 so we come up with an amount of three thousand three hundred and and forty-eight dollars. Our gross profit is three thousand three hundred thirty-two. So if we just subtract that minus our calculator and our estimate, we are at sixteen thousand dollars off. So our question is, would that be material? So that's what we expect them to be misstated as is is sixteen thousand dollars is that material well remember we had sales of ten million eight hundred thousand so everything's reported here in thousands of dollars um, sixteen thousand dollars is less than um, and then income before taxes it's gonna be it's not that huge of a percentage um, so so we would want to look at that a little closer but when we talk a little bit more, uh, one of the key things in discussing auditing is determination of what uh, materiality is, which we'll cover in a later in a later chapter. So sixteen thousand dollars may seem like a lot to us, but it really, in the in the scheme of things, may not be. Because remember, we're using estimates. We're going to be looking for when we do audited numbers and we start looking at what they actually produced. How much did it vary from these numbers here? If they're really way out of whack, we're going to look a little more into that saying okay this doesn't make sense why is that if they have a good explanation we may check off on it if they don't we may want to do some more investigative procedures so again this is using judgment okay and analytics so again it's estimates it's not supposed to be exact we're going to be looking for outliers when we do our testing and then we come down to it it's going to be is this material do we need to do more uh, Subsequent testing to make sure that we can give a reasonable assurance that the audit is clean. So, thank you for your time.